Ladies and gentlemen, this is Killer Cross. Please do not notify the police. Your signal has been interrupted. You are now listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420. Tuck your chin, please, sir. Thank you. Wow, what a fantastic gift. I realize the title of your show, Rock and Wrestling Local 420. And I'm going to take that idea and go extreme. Alrighty then, this is Phil Nershi of the Spring Cheese Incident coming to you from up in the Windy Mouth. I'm here joining Cosmic Chris on the Rock and Wrestling Local 420. This is the Big Ugly J.D. Bishop, and if you're not listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420, you must be stupid. Hey dear radio buddies, it's me, Max Volume. You are listening to Rock and Wrestling and Local 420 with Cosmic Chris. Hey, this is Chad of the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling Podcast. When you're done listening to my show, head on over and listen to the Rock and Wrestling Local 420, and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Hey, folks, they got a name for you when you're the greatest podcast in podcast alive today. They don't call you a great podcast, they call you Rock and Wrestling in Local 420. Beat it if you can. You're listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420 with your host, Cosmic Chris. Easter Sunday. Um, whoo, <coughs> so, uh, whoo, there's a little uh, six inch tall binger that I was hitting. So, that's a pretty, it hit, hits pretty fat actually. So, um, welcome to my show. How are you, ladies and gentlemen? Did you have a good Easter? Because I'm recording this on Easter, but you, of course you know that it's not going to come out till Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have had a fun week. I know this has been one of the... I mean, I've had a lot of shit happen in my life. Don't get me wrong, you know. Family deaths and, you know, Dino just died a few weeks ago, you know. So I'm not saying... I, I You know what I mean. <laughs> so with that said... Um, it's just been a rough week for us all. And I'm hoping that this week it starts to flatten out and taper off a little because I'm just getting... Now, the thing is, I want to start off with continuing my conversation about all that shit I was reading last week. I'm going to get into the news and stuff with music and wrestling but indulge me for a few more minutes i uh you know i was i saw that thing on the whole quainon shit and then all the you know um actual um footage and stuff like that it's just that with seeing that stuff it was i don't know it was just intriguing and it got so far and it was just with the COVID-19 stuff, it just got me running, and it actually kind of scared me. Like I said, I have come to the conclusion, and I'm going to tell you why. Like I said, thank you for indulging me. Is all this talk about the Tom Hanks thing and all this stuff. Tom Hanks just hosted fucking SNL and talked about getting the COVID and all that. And I'm just to the point now where... Okay, a good bullshit story, a good the a theory or something is always fun to talk about and explore. 
but this shit is just, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to. He, Tom Hanks just hosted SNL. I'll say it again. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, like everyone saying, oh, Oprah's in jail and all this. Okay, dude. I don't know. Now I'm having my moment of clarity. So I'm just going to take it with a grain of salt. I'm sorry I let it get to me for about a week and a half. It just was scary. Like I said, none of us have ever dealt with anything like this. And all this shit's coming out from nowhere. And I bought into it for about a week. You know, because I have friends like my one buddy. He's all about it. But you know what? I, I'm i not going to choose to really go further on this subject. I'm going to bow out now and just say, okay, you know, April Fool's, like, whatever. <laughs> now, something happens and we all get, you know, the Great Awakening and aliens finally come down and make first contact. Okay, whatever. But for the time being, I'm over that shit. And I'm also almost over wrestling because there's just, there was nothing really good to write down this week and on any program. I thought AEW actually sucked. Um, the only good thing was there was a promo from uh, Matt Hardy and uh, that was pretty cool. But you could tell he filmed it from the Harvey, Hardy compound. And then Brody Lee had a match and uh, that was all right. But Outside of that, there's nothing that interested me about AEW. Jake the Snake kind of still, but we're still wondering where that storyline's going. Impact, the only thing that had any, I had any interest in this week was uh, Susie ended up doing a match with Havoc, and uh, she didn't turn into Sue Young, so I don't know. And Susie lost, Havoc won. And, uh, but outside of that, um, I don't know, so far it still looks like James Mitchell might be dead. But, uh, let's see. That was all I really enjoyed about it with Impact. Um, Raw, I had no interest in whatsoever. And SmackDown, I still love the whole Otis thing. That's my favorite thing. I think the Otis storyline kicking Drew's ass. And now if you look on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook... Seeing all of these pictures, Happy Easter with with Otis and Mandy. So I'm clapping. Hooray for them. So I think that's kind of cool. I just didn't want him, Mandy to turn out to be this totally two-faced whore. You know? Excuse my terminology there, whore. So I'm glad they didn't make... Because, you know, I... I want, I don't want to see another, you know, bigger guy just get, you know, it's like when the popular kids fucked with you in high school. I don't want that. I'm over that shit. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Maybe because I might be biased, you know, but you know, nonetheless, nothing about wrestling made me want to write anything down, and I just even realized it a few a few minutes ago was like, "Oh, wow." We both said to each other, "I don't even think we written anything down." And we didn't. Not a whole lot to talk about. Now, there is a few things to talk about in uh, music news, and I'm actually surprised. I'm, I'm like, you know, because, oh, one of the things, now this is the biggest one that just kills me. Um, for the first time, now being a burner and having gone, I, 95 or 96, I want to say it's 96. I was 21 years old. I went out there with my editor, actually, and we all camped together, a bunch of us at the time, Jay and Tony and Tony, and, you know, we were always, every year, it was the same group of people, and uh, it was the year of Helco, and there was no roads, I, was, I think my year was the first year they actually charged for tickets, and mine was only like 50 or 60 bucks at the time, and uh, it was just... I've been going off and on since then for 24 years. I've been going, I'm pretty sure it was 96. It was the year of Helco, whatever year Helco was. And, uh, but yeah, it's canceled. Like, and I think the reason why is because we're still hoping for fish at the gorge and all this stuff because it's out so late that it might still be okay. Well, here's the thing. 
the the on sale tickets were supposed to go on when this thing happened so they held back on selling tickets and so with that they got they lost a month to sell tickets and i think all this bullshit now it's like they'd have to no, and nobody st- still doesn't really know, and so they're offering refunds for people that bought early bird tickets and stuff like that. But uh, outside of, you know, early bird tickets aren't when they're actually really on sale. It's for, you know, like any early bird. I mean, and I don't know the whole story. I mean, I have it here in front of me, but it just kind of goes on about shit that rambled into that. So I'm not going to start rambling about that, but it still... I'm just completely... They said they're going to have a virtual Burning Man, which I don't know. I am I have no idea. Like, live streams of art. I have no fucking clue. They're explaining it, and I still don't get it. That's the thing. I still don't get it. <laughs> so, hopefully it'll be back next year. Hopefully it'll be fucking cheaper, man, because... Like I said, I remember going with folks that went before me, and they never paid anything. They just fucking went out to the Black Rock Desert, you know, because once they moved it from Baker Beach and it came here, it was just a giant party with no limits and no law. They used to have drive-by shooting ranges. Like, you could literally go and drive with your eyes closed away from Black Rock City with your with your uh, foot on the gas closed for, like, 15 minutes 30 minutes before you fucking even think about having to open your eyes. And I did it on mushrooms on my bicycle, which was cool because, you know, you can get a lot of ground. And if you do hit something, (coughs) you're fucked, but you're not going to hit anything. And uh, doing it on a bicycle, and it was at night, I was going, and I was going, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And the next thing you know, I did see a flash of light, but it was some car or truck that was probably a mile or two even ahead of me. It was nowhere near me. But because it's at night and I'm fucking trying to, I just see a flash of light in front of me and I'm like, whoa, whoa. So I opened my eyes and it was a car way off in distance. At that point, that's when I turned around and started driving back and riding my bike back to Black Rock City. But it's stuff like that and just, just magical moments because it's not like any music festival you've ever been to. And it's going to be hard to have it not happen this year and i still like i said i did read i just didn't get it they're doing live streams with musicians okay so i get that i get seeing scott law or jerry joseph or famous people i like bruce kulik all the time does it you know and all these people doing live streams now which is cool because now people are writing music and having free time on their hands but they're also getting antsy and wanting to go out so hopefully this will end and everything will be getting better because uh, we got Glenn Danzig was talking to Rolling Stone and he's talking, they asked him about, you know, well, hey, what's on the agenda, you know, and they're all, all we have now is this thing on May 4th or May 10th or something like that. And, uh, you know, but that has, since the interview, that has since been canceled. So whatever they had isn't going to happen. But they, it was, and for the first couple of years, I had Dave Lombardo uh, from Slayer on the drums. Well, apparently now it's got all the original members, um, including uh, one of the extra guitar players, uh, AC Slade. So, um, but yeah, I, I guess they're talking about possibly recording new music and i think that's cool because he's t- they're they're high on this wave because uh he remembers back in the day and he said uh promoters used to say no punk band will ever sell out uh madison square garden and dude he's saying we've sold it out twice now and on top of that oversold it so, like, fuck you to all those fucking promoters that said no punk band would ever do that. Because he's like, we've done it. We did it twice now. And fuck you. I respect that. So, I hope they write a song about that. Because that's a pretty cool fucking thing. But outside of that, it's still looking like all this other stuff about uh, shows canceled and stuff. So, I don't know. We're not going to get Burning Man. Like I said, I hope we still get Fish. And uh, what's next on the roster... 
there's a bunch of like uh, albums that were released this week, like every other, like let's see, uh, oh, who is it? Oh, there. You know what I see before I even say that? Ex Runaways singer Cherie Curry recruits Slash and Billy Corrigan and more for new solo albums. So that would be cool. Maybe she'll have Joan or Lita or. I mean, I still think the Runaways should make some music, man. Uh, let's see. We got Tony Iommi saying, I'm in touch with Ozzy every day. So they're talking a lot. Uh. Tommy Lee says Motley Crue's Summer Stadium Tour is so far, everything's still a go. So hopefully that'll happen because I would love to actually see that. But uh, Rick Wakeman releases a new video trailer for The Red Planet. I haven't seen it yet. but And uh, Sammy Hagar and The Circle turn their attention to The Who for the latest lockdown challenge. Let's see, let me click on this real quick, because I didn't even actually uh, see that. So this is something that I'm actually reading fresh. Last week, Sammy Hagar and his bandmates from Circle remotely launched their first part of a lockdown challenge. The Red Rocker bassist Michael Anthony, drummer John Bonham, or Jason Bonham, and guitarist Vic Johnson each recorded their parts for a new track, Funky Feng Shui, from the four separate locations and filmed it on their iPhones. It happens that they have no plans to slow down and have now uploaded their take on Who Classic Won't Get Fooled Again. The band say another week in lockdown for COVID-19 and Sammy and the Circle still need to get their jam on. This week is a cover of the iconic Who song, Won't Get Fooled Again. Stay healthy, stay home, and stay tuned. While Bonham was in his home, Anthony recorded his part in the bedroom, Johnson in a spare room, but Sammy trumped them by recording his vocals in his bathroom. You know what? That, I'm not even going to say anything, because, dude, everyone knows, dude, Jim Morrison did L.A. Woman in the bathroom. Everyone knows... Great sound is in a bathroom. So, uh, oh yeah, I mean, I'll call you out on that one. Because that's just kind of, I mean, he knows as a singer, yeah, dude, bathrooms sound good. The Circle released their first studio album space between in May last year, which included the single Trust Fun Baby. I liked that one, so that one was pretty good. But uh, one thing for sure, that was a pretty long-winded uh, intro there. I'm kind of itching for some music. So, uh, let's get into... Hey, this is Kevin Kleinrock from Master Republic and the Keeping It 100 with Conan podcast, and you're listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420. Make sure you tune in every week. Hey, it's Pat Kelly of the West Coast Wrestling Connection and the Golf Guys Radio Show, and you're listening to my buddy, Cosmic Chris, Rock and Wrestling Local 420. This is Hot Shot Danny Duggan, and you're listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420. Excuse me. Excuse me. I said excuse me! Oh, there we go. We are back. Now, are you ready for this week in rock and wrestling? I hope you are. So, after the intro, we went into Henry Mancini and the theme for Pink Panther. Followed that up with Aviki 
or a Vici. I, I really don't know. I think it's a Vici, but everyone says it's a Vici. With his song, Levels, and then Madness with One Step Beyond. Do, 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 do. I love that song. Four Non Blondes closed that first set off of music with What's Going On. Not with, that's not how, I'm singing it wrong. That's because What's Going On is also that other song, What's Going On. But, no, it's that, I, what's going on. Yeah, it's a good song. I've always liked it. That's why I played it. Can't really sing worth a shit sometimes. Sometimes I do pretty good, but not that time. So, on April 15th, Tax Day, which I guess now because of the coronavirus, it's being pushed to July 15th, so I'm going to call first thing in the morning. So, by the time this is up, I would have already figured out if it's really getting, because I'm going to call it TurboTax. I've tried and trying to, but I don't know. It's just, it won't let me call for some, I don't know, dude. It's just weird. So on tax day, April 15th, 1729, Johann Sebastian Bach's St. Matthew's Passion premieres in Leipzig. 2012, Tupac's Hologram was uh, there with uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop at Coachella. 1933, Roy Clark is born. Fastest fingers on known to man in the Guns World Book of Records. Fastest banjo player ever. Or guitar player, one of the two. I mean, he's a banjo player, but he's an awesome guitar player, too. And I, uh, I don't know. One of them is in the fastest fingers. 1965, Linda Perry from Four Non Blondes is born. 2001, Joey Ramone dies at the age of 50. 1978, Austin Aries is born. April 16th, 1937, George the Animal Steel is born. 1968, Vicky Guerrero is born. 1980, Paul London is born. 1924, Henry Mancini is born. The guy behind the Pink Panther. 1939, Dusty Springfield is born. 1943, Lonesome Dave from Foghat and Savoy Brown is born. 1947, Jerry Rafferty is born from Steelers Wheels and Baker Street. I love Baker Street. I've played it a few times. 1953, Peter Garrett from uh, Midnight Oil is born. 1965, Gerardo. He had that song, uh, Rico Suave. And he was also one of the Mexican gangbangers in Colors. 1971, Selena Los Dinos is born. I miss Selena. 1999, Skip Spence from Moby Grape and Jefferson Airplane is, or died, actually. Let me reiterate, 1999, he died. So, you kind of get a rhythm sometimes, you know. <laughs> and it can lead you some good places and some bad places. So. April 17th, 1954, Rowdy Roddy Piper is born. Roderick Toombs. 1995, Bandito is born. 1970, Paul McCartney's first album, McCartney, is released. 1935, Don Kirshner, famous... Um, Studio musician, wrote a lot of the Monkees music, is uh, born. 1955, Pete Shelley from the Buzzcocks is born. 1959, Stephen Singleton from ABC is born. 1964, Maynard James Keenan from Tool is born. 1970, Redman is born. 1977, Reggae artist Sizzla is born, and I did not know he was younger than I am. 1960, Eddie Cochran dies. 1998, Linda McCartney dies from breast cancer at the age of 56. April 18th, 1961, the Brooklyn Brawler is born. 
1993, David Lee Roth is arrested for trying to buy a dime bag in New York City. That's fucking hilarious. 2015, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducts Lou Reed, Ringo Starr, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Green Day, Bill Withers, and Paul Butterfield Blues Band. 1935, Electra Records producer, Doors producer, and Janis Joplin producer Paul Rothschild is born. 1946, Skip Spence from the Moby Grape and the Jefferson Airplane is born. 1953, Rick Moranis, uh, one of the McKenzie brothers, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Louis Scully, and... Uh, Ghostbusters, like everybody and their brother. Everyone loves Rick Moranis. 1974, Mark Tremonti from Creed and Tremonti and uh, Alter Bridge is born. 2013, Cordell Boogie ba Mawson from the P-Funk dies. 1963, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash and June Carter is released. 1935, Dudley Moore, famous actor, is born. 1942, record producer Eddie Kramer, no, not from, uh, from uh, Aerosmith, but famous record producer. He produced The Beatles, David Bowie, Kiss, Led Zeppelin, The Stones, etc., etc. 1944, Bernie Worrell from P-Funk, Talking Heads, and The Woo Warriors is born. 1945, Ramrod, Lawrence Shirtliff, famous roadie for the Grateful Dead, is born. 1965, Suge Knight is born. 1997, El Duce dies. He was 39 years old. I guess he was wandering around on train tracks like Neil Cassidy, but apparently that's how he died. Got run over by a train and fell asleep on the tracks or was drunk and wandered, got hit by a train, something to that effect, because in 2012, LaVon Helm from the band dies. Also on that same day, Greg Ham, the sax player for Men at Work, dies at the age of 58. And also, April 19th, don't forget, is National Bicycle Day. It is the anniversary of Hoffman's discovery of LSD, not the actual discovery of it, but the actual first actual acid trip. So he discovered it like four or five years before, like in 37 or something like that. And when he finally got, that's why it's LSD 25, the 25th dose, he accidentally ingested it a few days prior. And this was, uh, I think it's the first intentional trip, not the first accidental. But I think this is, you know what, no, I think uh, he accidentally ingested himself and then took the bike ride home, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, it's the anniversary of the first LSD trip in history. So let's celebrate that, because next up, we got our annual favorite holiday of the year. Also, April 20th, 420, 1985, Kurt Hawkins is born. 1984, Garrett Bischoff, son of Eric Bischoff, is born. 1974, Band on the Run by Wings is released in the U.S. 1981, Papa John Phillips is arrested on a drug rap. 1992, the Concert for Life for uh, Freddie Mercury was held on that day at Wembley Stadium. 1923, Tito Puente is born. 1967, Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater and all sorts of 200 other bands. 1972, Stephen Marley, son of Bob Marley, is born. 2017, Cuba Gerding Sr. dies at the age of 72. 2018, Aviki dies. April 21st, 1957, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is born. 1989, Nikki Cross is born. 1963, Beatles meet the Stones for the first time. 1984, after 37 weeks, Footloose knocks Thriller from the top of the album charts. 
1947, Iggy Pop is born. 1958, Mike Barson, the keyboard player for Madness, is born. 1959, Robert Smith of The Cure is born. Also, Jerry Only is born from The Misfits. 1966, Michael Fronte from Spearhead is born. 1978, Brandon Steinekert, the drummer for uh, Rancid, is born. 2003, Nina Simone dies from breast cancer at the age of 70. And also on that day, we lost Prince Rogers. And it's one of those ones with me was like Michael Jackson, Dio, Jerry Garcia. And Prince was one of those guys with me. And man. So that was This Week in Rock and Wrestling. Let's get into some more music. But look first... Let's hear from our sponsor. Take us home, sponsor. Are you hungry? Foodjets.com offers on-demand food delivery with fast curbside service seven days a week. If you're hungry, it's time to buzz the tower. Come on board. Just download Food Jets on your app store, Google Play, or go to foodjets.com and put in promo code radio to get $5 off your first order. Greg Golden from the Greg Golden Band, Bizarre Guitar in Reno, Nevada, and you're listening to Rock and Wrestling Local 420. Those guys rock. Hey guys, it's the end of the episode. Thank you for tuning in yet again. I wanted to uh, go over what I played, like I do every week. So after uh, this week in Rock and Wrestling, I started that set off with Johnny Cash with Ring of Fire. Into Midnight Oil and Beds Are Burning. Followed that up with Michael Fronte and Spearhead with Yell Fire. Talking Heads Burning Down the House. Parliament, Flashlight, Prince Purple Rain. Then our weekly George Carlin rant with Children Aren't Special. <laughs> Tool 46 and 2. Queen from the Concert for Life. With Tony Iommi on guitar and Roger Daltrey on vocals singing I Want It All. And then closed it off with the band and When I Paint My Masterpiece. So that was this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, I'm trying to see one of the things I want to talk about is I've been trying to upload just the talk parts up on YouTube, but for some reason it's not in the right format, so I'm trying and I've been converting it, and I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I've never had an issue, but every time I've also uploaded on YouTube, it's always been a video. So, but I have no fucking clue. I'll figure it out. So, hope you can still subscribe to my YouTube channel. It, it is slowly but surely gaining a little bit of momentum. I do have, uh, I think, two more followers, actually. But uh, check out our Instagram uh, with, I'm uh, Punching Baby Yoda, uh, at R-A-W-L-420-P-O-D, that's at Raw420Pod, on the Twitter and let's see what else. You can email us, Rock and Wrestling Look 420 at Gmail. Let us know what you think. You can find us on any actual uh, uh, podcast thing Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, Podcast Attic. You can find us on like a bunch of different shit. So check us out and uh, subscribe, like, ring the bell, do whatever. Hopefully, you like it. And uh, let's uh, thank Tony Kerlick and uh, Kevin Ryan, my producers and editors, for making me sound so good. And uh, throw some love to Brian Zane, the Z-Man, with his show Wrestling With Regret. And uh, now catch him on uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling with the Top 5. Check out John and Chad from the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling podcast. And their other podcast with the franchise Shane Douglas 
the Triple Threat Podcast, now on uh, Russo's The Brand on the Realm Network. It's only, it's less than a dollar a week, so less than four dollars a month. You can't beat that with all the shows and stuff. And uh, you get to have Disco and Jeff Lane on, uh, well, I don't know, because this last week didn't have Vince Russo. He bowed out, so I don't know. But either way, you get a lot of good podcasts. And uh, check out uh, Cassie and Zach's podcast, We Just Made the List. Check out Worst Little Podcast here in Reno with Nick Ramirez. And uh, what else we got? That's all I can think of right at the moment. Oh, check out Z Dude, Z E E D O O D. He's the one helping me with my YouTube channel. His channel's growing as well. So check out his channel. And uh, he's also on Instagram. Check out his Instagram. But make sure you tune in this week, next week, and all the weeks coming until I get tired of doing this, which so far I haven't gotten tired of it. It's been two and a half years, so I'm enjoying coming at you every week with uh, new content and talking about some different shit. So, see you next week, guys.